fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Just at dawn, the man climbed the scaffold, his hands tied behind him, a deputy sheriff following him. The noose was fitted around his neck. Judge Martin called from below the scaffold. Have you anything to say before you die? Yes. I'm innocent. The judge shook his head. A moment later, the trap was sprung and the man dropped to his death. He had been caught red-handed in his crime. But people knew that he was only one of the band of outlaws that had been terrorizing the trail between Bannock and Virginia City. From the man's last words, they started calling the gang the Innocents. And the name was on everyone's lips for the next month, because after the hanging, there were more and more holdups and murders. Got all his dust? Sure. Then shoot. It was well past midnight when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up in front of Judge Martin's house on the outskirts of Banner. Look through the window, Tonto. There he is. Ah. That judge. Huh? Yes, he's working late. Come on. Easy, big fellow. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. What can I... Your mask. Don't you recognize me, Judge? Is it? It is. It's you at last. Come in. Come in and welcome. Thanks. Uh, This is Toto. How? I'm pleased to meet you, Toto. If you'll just wait a minute while I draw the curtains across the windows. That's a good idea. Uh, There. Now come over here and sit down. I'd almost given up hope. The only way I knew how to reach you was through the Padre. We didn't stop at the mission until last week. And we came directly here. Well, I'm glad. We need your help. Your letter said you did. Even more than when I wrote it. The innocents are getting worse. There have been ten holdups during the past two weeks. There have been five murders. Between here and Virginia City? Yes. It isn't safe for a man to carry gold dust on the trail. They always seem to know. How? I can't tell you. 
must mean there are members of the gang in both towns. I'm sure of it. And your sheriff hasn't been able to find any clue to their identity? None at all. Oh. Of course, Charlie was up in Montana when they started off. Charlie? Uh, Charlie Webb, the sheriff. Let's see. He didn't get back until after we caught the first one. The only one, I should say. Oh, he's done his best, I know, and he's able and courageous. But the innocents are more than a match for him. You believe there are a lot of them? Yes, and they're well organized. Their leader must be a brilliant man. That's why we need someone like you to track down these these killers and bring them to justice. We'll do our best, Judge. Uh, would you like to meet the sheriff? No, not right away. Todd and I'll take a look around first. Uh, whatever you think best, but if there's anything that I can do, please let me know. Well, there's only one thing I ask. What? For the time being, don't mention our being here to anyone. Two days passed. Two days that were exceptionally quiet for Bannock. Not a robbery was reported on the trail. But on the evening of the second day, Sheriff Webb called at Judge Martin's house. Judge, during the past two days, four men left Virginia City who never reached here. What's that? It's true. Jed and Jim Travis, Lim Ford and Sam Whitman. Why? Jed and Jim were traveling together. Lem and Sam rode alone. All of them were carrying gold. And they've all disappeared? Not a trace of them. You believe they've been murdered? What else can I believe? Uh, so now the innocents aren't leaving a trace of their crimes. I'm not sure the innocents were to blame. A masked man and an Indian have been seen on the trail. Oh. Well, I'm about ready to turn in my badge, Judge. My boy. I mean it. I'm not getting anywhere and people don't have any confidence in me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. No? Well, I'll tell you this in strictest confidence, then. Horace Burton has taken the stage from Virginia City tomorrow. He's heading for Salt Lake. Yes? I talked to him today. It's perfectly obvious that he'll be carrying a lot of gold with him. And I suggested that some of my deputies ride the stage with him. An excellent idea. He doesn't think so. Why not? Because he doesn't think there'd be any protection against the innocents. Well, don't be too discouraged, Sheriff. I have an idea the innocents will be caught before long. By me? You're... You're the sheriff. All right. I thought you might have had some word that troops were being sent here. Well, that might happen, too. Oh, don't worry, my boy. Just do the best you can. Uh, I will. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I'll say good night. Good night, my boy. The judge watched the sheriff right away. And a moment later, as he still stood in the doorway, he was startled by a low call from the side of the house. Judge. Who's there? I'm sorry, Joe. I want you to take a ride with me. The masked man. Yes, I've saddled your horse. A ride? A ride where? My camp in the hills. At this time of night? It wouldn't be safe at any other time. That was the sheriff who just left. His men have seen you in Tonto. Don't you think it would be wise to tell him who you are? No, not yet, Judge. I found some men who will make a better posse than his deputies. Will you come with me? Of course. Get up there. One, two, three. The Lone Ranger led the way into the hills for several miles. Then he and the judge turned into a wooded ravine. A campfire glimmered through the trees... And when they reined up in the circle of light... Oh, oh easy, steady, big fellow. Howdy, Judge. Judge Travis and Jim and Lem and Sam. They we're all here. The sheriff said that you had disappeared. Just for a little while, Judge. Mask man brought you here? We came willing enough. You see, uh, he sort of saved our lives first. No sort of about it. What happened? Well, sir, a couple of the innocents held me and Jim up. Same thing happened to Lem and Sam. That's right, Judge. The masked man and the Indian came along at the right time, got the drop on the road agents, took their guns and sent them hightailing. You caught some of those crooks and you let them get away? There was a reason for that, Judge. We know there are a lot of them, and catching two or three won't help much. That's right. We want the whole caboodle. Now, this is a posse I was talking about. Now, each of these men have a good reason for wanting the innocents behind bars. You sure do. And there are others who have been held up who feel the same way. I've got a list here, Judge. All of them in Bannock. We want you to pass the word to him tonight to meet us out here. Uh, 
Dodge Forster and Lanky, Aubrey's. Yes, of course, Jed. The mask man. Have you told these men who you are? They know I'm a friend of yours and that I'm against the innocents. They've agreed to forget about my mask. He's the man who saved our lives. That's enough for us. That's right. When you get these new recruits, what are you going to do then? That depends on the innocents. Well, I still think it was a mistake to let even one of them escape. Hanno followed them. We know where they can be found. Where? Who are they? One of them is a stage driver. Really? Ed Reddick. Another runs the way station, and a third works at Pete Daly's Roadhouse. All connected with the stage line. Uh, mask man. Yes, Judge? Horace Burton is taking the stage from Virginia City tomorrow morning, and he's refused any protection from the sheriff. The innocents will know all about his trip. They'll hold him up. They may try, Judge. Will you get back to town right away and contact the men on that list? Yes, but sure. And not a word to anyone else. Not even to the sheriff? No, Judge. All right. That's the way you want it. Hey, somebody's coming. Yes, it's Toto. Anything wrong, Toto? I'm King Masabi. Me watch way station. Yes? Many men come there tonight. Them there now. The innocents are gathering. That's right. Tonto see fellow from Roadhouse. Stage driver, too. The sheriff should be notified. He could arrest them. On what evidence? Well, if they're about to start on one of their raids... They aren't, Judge. They'll be planning their work for tomorrow. Here, Silver. What are you going to do? Set an innocent to catch an innocent, Judge. I'm going to try to join their organization. Easy, big fellow. Easy, stuff. Easy. One, Silver. Come on, stop. At the Rattlesnake Ranch way station, a smoky oil lamp lighted the faces of 12 men. Court Manson, who ran the way station, sat behind a table facing them. I had a talk with the boss. He wants me to make sure you all know what you're expected to do tomorrow. Well, I got something else to bring up. Wait a minute, Ed. You'll be driving a stage. Yeah, it just happens to be my regular run. And it looks like there'll only be Burton and the guard he's hired for passengers. That's right. Well... We don't do nothing until after it passes Daly's Roadhouse. As soon as Ed gets his horses changed there and starts on again, Casey will hightail it through the hills to the canyon where you'll all be waiting. He'll give you the word that Burton's on board. Everybody got that straight? Yep. The boss will take charge of the canyon. What's he gonna do about that masked man? We'll take care of him after we take care of Burton. What if he holds me up before I get to the canyon? Are you talking about me? What? Wait, you're covered... I advise you to keep your hands away from your gun. You got a lot of nerve, mask man. Oh, there's no reason why our talk can't be friendly. What's on your mind? Same thing that's on yours, Horace Burton. All right, quiet, all of you. Quiet down. You've spoiled our play three times already. That's right. I can do it again. But I'm suggesting that we work together tomorrow instead of against each other. You want to come in with us? On one condition. What's that? And I get half of Burton's gold. Half of it? Hey, there's a lot of us. There's only one of you. You can take it or leave it. You can be with me or against me. Now, now wait a minute. I think maybe we can work out a deal. You're not the leader of the innocents. Can you answer for him? Why, sure. We've been talking about you. He'd like you to join up with us. All I want is a yes or no. It's yes. And just tell me where and when, and I'll be there. Half a mile from here. The canyon at three o'clock. Good. I'll be seeing you. The Lone Ranger slammed the door and leaped to Silver's back. The outlaws burst through the door. Ed Reddick raised his gun to fire after the dim figure disappearing in the murky night. But Quirt grabbed his arm. Let go! Oh, you fool. Shoot at him and he'll know we planned a double cross. Just one shot. You can't even see him, let alone hit him. Shoot and he'll fire back. You're a perfect target in that light. Shoot and we won't have any chance to finish him off tomorrow. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger rode away from the way station, the innocent surrounded Quirt, angry and argumentative. Fine thing. Three times during the past two days, he's moseyed in, got the drop on one or the other of us. And this was our chance to get even. You could have at least let us take one shot at him. He thinks he's made a deal with us. We'll be sure and get him tomorrow. But you told him the truth. You told him right where we're going to pull the hold up. Listen to me. Ed's right. The boss won't like what you did. Will you listen? It's possible this hombre was on the level. It's possible he wants to join up with us. Well, you got no right to tell him he can. That's up to the boss. Sure. And I'm going to see him as soon as we get through here. I'm not taking anything on myself. You're dead. For the minute I had to. If the masked man shows up the canyon and helps us with the job, that's fine. But I don't see it. After it's all over, we'll have him right with us. We can do what we want with him. Yeah, but you told him the truth. Now that he knows where we'll be, he'll pick some other spot closer to Virginia City. He may yep. try, Casey, but he won't get away with it. We're changing our plans a little. How? You and Al and Joe will trail the stage all the way. Well, if the masked man tries to hold it up... You'll take care of him. You'll see that the stage gets through. I don't like any of this, and I don't like you making plans for us, Quirk. Can you think of a better plan? I take my orders from the boss, and he ought to be told that the masked man's after Burton. I say we should go and see him right now, Quirk. He won't like it. Well, he won't like it if you don't tell him what happened here. All right, all right, we'll go. But just you and me. The rest of you stay here till we get back. Eh, you better hurry. We all got a far piece of riding to do before morning. We'll hurry. Come on, Ed. Right. Early the next morning, the Lone Ranger, disguised as a cowhand, walked into the stage line office in Virginia City and bought a ticket for Bannock. As soon as the stage rolled up in front of the office... He opened the door and started to climb inside. Hey, where do you think you're going? I'm going wherever the stage is going, driver. I kind of hope it's Bannock. Agent said it was only going to be Mr. Burton and another fella. Couldn't I be the other fella? Oh, you couldn't. He's a friend of Mr. Burton's. Well, maybe the agent hadn't had time to tell you about me. See, I just bought my ticket. Oh. Did he warn you that we've been having a lot of holdups on the trail? Nope. Well, we have. You figure there'll be one on this trip? I didn't say that. Well, I've taken my chances before. Guess I can take them again. Remember I warned you? I sure will. Well, oh, hi, Mr. Burton. Good morning, Ed. All ready to start? Yes, sir. That's good. Lou will give you a hand with my luggage. Sure. And Lou, you'll be riding up on the box bed. Eh? Yes, sir. All right, right, Lou, I'll climb up you. <laughs> uh, good morning, sir. Howdy. Are you going all the way to Bannock? I hope so. Yes, so do I. I take it you've heard about the innocents. <laughs> From what I've heard, it doesn't seem to be a very good name for them. Yes, no. Well, it's been quiet the last few days. Perhaps we can hope for a peaceful trip. Huh? Good morning, Mr. Burton. Sheriff, what are you doing here? I'm going to make this trip with you. Oh, Sheriff, I explain. I know you did. Lou's riding on the box with head, and there's no better shot in the county. I've respected your wishes, Mr. Burton. I haven't made you conspicuous by assigning a posse to the cooks. But I started thinking about it last night. Your safety is my responsibility. I rode all the way over from Bannock just to ride back with you. Well, I appreciate your concern. Still, I think it would have been wiser to let me slip quietly out of town. I'm sorry. We'll say no more about it. All your luggage been stowed away? Yeah, most of it's gone in the boot. I have a small bag here. I see. And uh, what might your name be, stranger? My name... Well, it might be General Custer, Sheriff. I don't think... Why it. don't we decide that it is for the duration of the trip? <laughs> then we'll all feel safer. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good indeed, General. <laughs> Though, uh, personally, I wish you were the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Here we go. Get up. Come on. Come on. The stagecoach rattled out of town and into the wild, rough country to the west of Virginia City. The trail twisted and turned. The swaying coach jarred its passengers without mercy, and the stop at Daly's Roadhouse for a change of horses was welcome. Then they got underway once more, and a mile past the roadhouse, the lone ranger leaned out of the window and waved. Who are you signaling to? Well, every now and then I see a rider up on the ridge. I was just saying hello to one of them. Where? He's riding away. 
That's an Indian. You sure got good eyes, Sheriff. He's leading a white horse. I could make that out for myself. It's the same one. Yeah, you seem to be excited, Sheriff. I've seen a masked man riding that white horse. I'd advise you gentlemen to make sure your guns are ready for use. You say so, Sheriff. I aim to please. After Toto had seen the Lone Ranger's signal, he raced westward through the hills toward the grove where the posse was waiting. It was unnecessary to lead Silver, and the great horse loped easily at Scout's side. The country was rugged and the footing uncertain, but they were traveling at least twice as fast as the coach. And it was only two hours later when Tonto reined up at the grove. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, you're uh, back, Tonto. Uh, uh, Lone Ranger rides stage. It's going to be a mighty dangerous spot. Ah. You see men from gang? Jim and I did, Tonto. They're in Rattlesnake Canyon. Them see you? Shucks, no. We crawled up to the top of the ridge. Oh, that's good. Now, Tonto, show your place near Canyon, where we wait. You hear that, men? Get mounted. Tonto's going to show us where we'll wait for the stage. Let's go. All All right. right. Come on, Jim. Let's go. The hours passed and the stage continued on its way. One o'clock, two o'clock, and now it was close to three. Although the Lone Ranger seemed to be dozing, he was watching every move that the sheriff made. And in his mind, he pictured the point where Rattlesnake Canyon met the trail. The sharp bend, the canyon opening, the steep slope to the left of the trail. If the ambush were to be there, his plan was set. The stage labored up a long grade, then it gained speed on the downward slope. The Lone Ranger leaned out the window. They were coming to the curve just before the canyon. He saw the sheriff's hand started slowly for his gun, and he knew that the moment for action had come. They're coming, Sheriff. What? You heard me. Drop your gun belt to the floor. I won't do it. You'll do as I say. That goes for you too, Mr. Burton. Drop your gun belt. You, you are an outlaw. You're one of the innocents. No, I'm not. I'm trying to save your life. But I can't expect you to believe that. I'll have to take your gun. Now hurry. Yes, yes, sir. Yours go out the window, Sheriff. Yours too, Mr. Burton. I've got an idea. You usually wear a mask. Your guess is correct. Well, you've waited too long. We'll see. You were one of the innocents. What the sheriff meant was that the innocents are waiting around the next curve, waiting to hold up the stage. This man is our leader, Burton. <laughs> sheriff! Oh, you haven't got a chance, either of you. We won't be playing the game according to your rules. I'm going to leave you two inside here. I'm going up to the box. So you think you'll take over the team and make a run for it? Perhaps. Go ahead. Up there, you'll just stop a bullet all the faster. <laughs> The Lone Ranger slipped through the window and started to pull himself up to the top of the coach. Ed, look out! Ed heard the sheriff's warning too late. The words were obscured by the sound of the stage. And when he turned, he was looking into the muzzles of the Lone Ranger's gun. You're not armed, Ed. Good. Why, you... Blue, don't try to level that rifle. Put it down and take the reins from Ed. What's going on here? Don't argue. You'll find out in a minute. Do as I say. Put down your rifle and take the reins. All right. That's it. Now back, Ed. Swing yourself down inside. Whatever it is you're trying to pull, you won't get away with it. Hurry up. I am. You handle the team all right, Lou. Don't it look like it? Yes, you're doing fine. If this is a holdup, it's it isn't. Funny. But the innocents are waiting around the next curve. Huh? Ed's one of them. That's why I had to get rid of him. Ed's an outlaw. There isn't time to explain. That's why you're taking orders at the point of a gun. But if the innocents are waiting... They're waiting at the opening of the canyon around the next bend. Rain up just as soon as you see them. And get down behind the stage and start shooting. Two of us can't fight off that gang. We'll have help. Judge Martin and the posse are waiting back in the canyon. The innocents will ride toward us. The posse will ride out of the canyon behind them, and they'll be caught in a trap. Here's the curve. Start riding up. Oh! Hold on! Oh! Give your hand with a brake! Oh! 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 There they are. Get down fast! Here they come. Open fire! For five long minutes, the Lone Ranger and Lou held the innocents at bay. The two men's concentrated fire made the outlaws dismount and take cover. And then, as Quirt was urging them to close in, they heard a new sound behind them. The shouts of Judge Martin and the posse. The innocents fought desperately, but caught between two fires and with no chance for escape, they had only the choice of surrender or death. At last, they chose to surrender. The posse closed in and the gang was rounded up. Oh, 
All right, Mr. Burton. You can get out now. Uh, thank you, sir. Take heaven's edge over. Now you, Sheriff, and you, Ed. All right. We've got them all. That's fine, Judge. How are you, Burton? Then I'm, I'm all right now. Will you take charge of the Sheriff and Ed, Judge? It'll be a pleasure. Move along, Sheriff. How does it feel to be under arrest? My God. Jim, tie these two up. Yes, sir, Judge. Oh, right. How did you ever guess it was the sheriff who was leading the innocents? We didn't. It was the masked man that did that. He knew that Quirt Manson was one of the gang. He followed Quirt to the sheriff's house last night. After that, it was a simple matter of putting two and two together. Hey, you, you said the masked man... What mask man? Why, the man who rode the stage with you. He's a... Why, there he is, riding that white horse. Just starting up the canyon with the Indian. Uh, he isn't wearing any mask. Well, he usually does. But to travel with you, he disguised himself. The Indian's name is Tonto. The white horse is called Silver. Silver? Then my wish was granted. Wish? Yes, Judge. And I suppose that's why I'm still alive. When we left Virginia City, I wished, as all travelers do on a dangerous trail, that I, that I could be traveling with the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.